Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so like Kim said, my name is Johanna Schwant, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm an academic advisor, so I work mainly with liberal arts students. Um, and then, like Kim said, I am mainly located on the Wilmer campus, but I do go between the two campuses as well. Um, something to know with advising is that we are not uh, directly tied to financial aid, but that we will support you and help as much as we can and then connect you with the financial aid um, office or the business office, depending on your questions. And so for today, I have um, just a, a basic PowerPoint just to go over a broad overview of understanding financial aid, understanding payment plans. Um, and then after we're done recording, if anybody wants to stay on and ask individual questions, you can do that. Otherwise, Kim is monitoring the chat or you can just unmute yourself and um, feel free to interrupt and ask questions. Um, at this point, I'm just wondering how many of you, so I suppose if you could put it in the chat or use the thumbs up reaction, um, how many of you have completed your financial aid application? So your FAFSA, uh, if you can just put a yes, a no, or some type of reaction so that way we know. So it looks like for sure at least two people um, if you have not done your financial aid application yet, three people, okay, if you have not and you need help with that, I will um, review how to schedule an appointment with our financial aid team. Um, certain advisors, so if you were part of the TRIO program, then your advisors could assist you with applying. Um, otherwise, as a equity and inclusion specialist, I can help you as well. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen. Um, as we go through, it may be helpful to log into your e-services so that you can see where, where we're talking about. Um, but otherwise, like I said, just ask questions, uh, put it in the chat. You can put post it for everyone to see, or you can do a private message to Kim. Um, certainly you can message myself, but it will be easier with Kim monitoring the chat. Okay, so we're just gonna dive right in. try this a second time. Let's see, share screen. Okay, so on the monitor, you should see the presentation for all things financial aid. Um, as we're going through, just again, ask questions. So the first thing I wanna point out is our student services contact information. Um, if you're not sure which department to start with, business office, financial aid, advising, that 5971 number is going to be your best option to start with. So if you call 320-222-5971, that will ring for both our Hutchinson and Wilmer campus. And then our student service specialist can help direct you to the best department. If you know you specifically have a business office question or are planning to pay your tuition, you can call that number directly at 320-234-8596. Now, if you have not applied for financial aid, the Minnesota Dream Act, or if you have financial aid questions, you can contact the financial aid department directly at the 320-222-7488 or you can use the financial aid link to schedule a virtual appointment. We do have staff members that are now on campus, um, so you certainly could request to see if that's an option as well. We also have walk-in computers available if you need to apply for financial aid and you need access to an internet and the computer. The next piece I wanna point out has to do with our tuition and fees breakdown. Um, again, you can find this information on our website. The rate that you see is for fall semester, and this shows you how the tuition charges are broken down and the fees. Now, depending on your major and program, there may be associated additional charges and a differential cost. 
you can find that information on our website um, or you can contact us at that student services number and we can review it either with our department or with the business office. In general, if you are a new liberal arts student, you will be paying that 197.10 rate. Um, if you're in a fully online course, there will be some additional charges. Once you've registered for classes, you will be able to see your bill in your e-services. Um, so at this point, does anyone have questions related to how tuition and fees are set up? Okay. So now the next piece I wanna point out, um, I believe almost all of you have said that you have completed your financial aid application. If you have not applied for financial aid or FAFSA, then you are going to have some homework to do and get that done this week. The reason we want you to get that done sooner than later is because it takes three to five business days once you submit your FAFSA for it to come to the college, and then our financial aid team will need time to have that processed. One in three students can get selected for verification. And that does not mean that you've done anything wrong. It's just part of the audit report that happens. It could be your name, income, family size. It's random on who and on what it's selected. If you are applying for financial aid or FAFSA, you need to be an eligible non-citizen or a US citizen. Information that you need would be your social security number, your alien registration number if you're not a US citizen, your federal income tax returns, W-2s, and other records of money earned. You're looking two years back when you apply for financial aid. Um, something that I get asked when it comes to financial aid is, well, two years back was a while ago, so what happens if my income has changed? What happens if life is happening and now my income is less than what I was making two years ago? You're gonna go ahead and complete your financial aid application and then we're going to have you connect with our financial aid director to discuss special circumstances and what additional information you might need to provide. At that point, the financial aid de department will review your case and let you know if we can make any adjustments. So if that's something that applies to you and you have questions or concerns where your income is less than what you were making two years ago, um, let myself know, let Kim know, or we can connect you directly with the financial aid department. Now, if you are not eligible for the FAFSA because you are an undocumented student or a DACA recipient, then you might be eligible to apply for the Minnesota DREAM Act. This is through the Office of Higher Education. And so this is a separate application from FAFSA. To be eligible for this, you need to attend a Minnesota high school for at least three years, and it does not have to be consecutive. You need to have graduated from a Minnesota high school or earned your GED in Minnesota. And then if you are a male student between 18 and 25, you'll need to register for selective service. Now this particular application is something that I will help students with when applying. So if you think this is something that you might be eligible for, or if you have questions, please jot down my contact information that's listed under the Want Help Applying box, and then reach out to me and we can have a more in-depth conversation on this application. The next page is gonna refer more to the FAFSA or Federal Financial Aid option, which is what many of our students will qualify for. Um, and this type of aid, you are typically awarded three types of financial aid, you're gonna be awarded potentially grants, which is the type of funding that all students want, but not everyone is eligible for. That is gifted money, meaning that you do not have to pay it back. You have student loan eligibility, which all students who qualify for financial aid will at a minimum have some student loans available to them. To accept student loans, you'll have some additional steps that you need to complete in order to make sure that you understand the loan process, the repayment op options, and just make sure that you're aware of how student loans work. And the third option is work study eligibility. 
Work study is an opportunity for our students to work on campus typically. We do have a handful of opportunities off campus in our communities as well. The pay is $12.50 per hour and students are able to work up to 20 hours a week depending on what you're awarded or allowed to work under work study. Jobs are across campus and departments and so um, we have students who work in our bookstore, our library, with our maintenance team, various departments and offices across uh, the college. We also have some opportunities in the community itself where you might be able to work at a local youth center. So if you have questions on work study opportunity, please let your advisor know or find information on our website. As you prepare for financial aid, I really want you to think about what does smart borrowing look like? Student loans are a great opportunity to help assist students while they're in school, pay for their education, and still be able to, to reach your goals. Now with student loans, we wanna make sure that students understand what does borrowing look like and that if you don't need to, you don't have to accept all of your student loans. Let's explore all of your options. Let's talk about money management and budgeting. On our website, we have a free resource for you to utilize and you can review what it means to pay for college, understand your money management and just have some real world finance. Um, one of the questions I will get about financial aid is when will I receive my money? And financial aid will process to your bill after the first week of classes. So by Friday, August 27th, you will then see that your bill is being run a report. So that way we can apply your financial aid payments towards your bill. At that point, if you have any funding remaining, then once that's processed, we will begin notifying students with direct deposit or with uh, checks being mailed out. Now those dates that those are being sent out will vary depending on what you have set up and if you're a first time borrower or not. If you have questions on what that looks like, again, please reach out to your advisor or contact our general student services line and we can connect you with either the business office or financial aid, depending on your question. If you have questions on reviewing financial aid, applying, um, discussing work study, if you are a veteran and you are completing that process uh, to use benefits, again, you can always call us directly you can stop by campus to see if someone is available or you can use the link so that way you can schedule a virtual appointment. Our financial aid team is available on both campuses and also supports our online students. So regardless of which location you choose, just know that we have people here to help support you as you prepare to pay for school. So this is the piece where I'm going to want you to log into your e-services. If you have registered for classes, I would like you at this time to go into your e-services, log in with your STAR ID information, and then once you've done that, we're going to navigate through the e-services portal so you can find where your financial aid review is and your bills and payments. If anybody needs to log into their e-services and you need to reset your password, you should see a link to do that. So I'm just gonna pause for a brief moment to give students an opportunity to log in. Okay, so now that you're logged into e-services, what you should see is your dashboard or your homepage. Once you've done that, you're gonna click on the financial aid option that you'll find on the far left side. At that point, if you have registered for classes, you'll be able to see your bill, which you can download, or you can click on the plus sign and expand. Once you get books, you will see those charges apply to your bill if you're planning to use financial aid. Now all students will see a bill at this point because your financial aid will not apply to your account until the first week or that add drop period um, has passed. 
As you click on that financial aid tab, you will then be able to review how much financial aid you get. Financial aid is based on the number of credits you take. And so depending on what you're awarded, you might be eligible for some aid at three credits. You might be eligible for aid at six credits, 12 credits, or 15. The average full-time student needs to take between 14 and 16 credits a semester to finish their degree within two years. Now, depending on your program, that might mean you are registered for more credits. That might mean you can register for less. So if you have questions on that part of reviewing your bill, always check with your advisor. Typically for student loan eligibility, you need to register for at least six credits. For grants, it can vary where you might be able to get awarded with one class or you might need to take additional courses. If you have questions on reading what your bill looks like, again, you can reach out to your advisors. Um, depending on your question, we'll then connect you with financial aid or we will connect you with the business office. One thing to note is when you're reviewing your bill, as you can see, there's multiple schools listed on this example. If you're attending more than one school, if you're taking classes through more than one institution, or if you have a bill from a previous semester, if they're within our school system, so if they're a part of Minnesota State, you will see that information listed here as well. So the next thing I want you to look at is going to be the bills and payments section. When you're on bills and payments, you will then be able to determine if you need to set up a payment plan option, if you want to give someone permission to view your bill, or if you want to directly make a payment. Now, if you are not planning to use financial aid, one of our options so that you don't get dropped from courses is to make a down payment um, of $300 or 15%, whichever is less, and that will reserve your spot in your courses. At that point, you will then get information on making your final payment, or you will wanna set up a payment plan. If you have questions on what our payment plan options look like, you can contact the Nelnet company. The best thing to do is use that Nelnet fax payment plan link Go through the process and then you'll see the options that are available to you so that you can decide which one makes the most sense for you. If you have questions on comparing your bill with your financial aid, please let me know and then I'm happy to help walk you through that process. Or again, depending on your question, we'll connect you with our business staff or our financial aid staff. At this point, anybody who's logged into eServices do you have questions on finding the financial aid section or the bills and payments section? Okay. So again, looking at student loan eligibility, what we're going to talk about next is if you're using student loans, you have to complete two forms called an entrance counseling form and a master promissory note. These can be found on the student aid website and that website you are going to log in with your FAFSA ID information. The student aid is the website that you can go to track your student loans, how much you've taken out in your education career and history. You can learn more about student loans and what that looks like and just have a better idea of how you're using your financial aid overall. On your e-services, you'll see a link to the studentaid.gov website if you're planning to accept loans or you can go directly to that website and complete those forms. It probably takes anywhere between a half hour and maybe 45 minutes, depending on if you're actually taking the time to read the questions and answer, um, and depending on um, how much of those forms you may already know some of the information to. If you have questions when you complete entrance counseling and the master promissory note, you can always reach out to our financial aid team and we can help provide you with some support. Again, if you need access to a computer, you can come to campus to complete those forms. I would say just plan on a half hour to 45 minutes um, and then 
you can always uh, work with our financial aid advisors or your academic advisor. One thing you'll notice in your e-services is that there's, there's going to be an option to set up direct deposit. And so if you are someone who will have an overage or extra financial aid, you can set that up, which is going to be the, the quickest way for you to get your free fund. So while we do mail out checks, we do encourage students to set up the direct deposit option instead. If you have questions on setting that up, again, let us know. Your academic advisor is always going to be your starting point if you're not sure which department to go to. Depending on the question, we may need to connect you with another department, but always reach out to us if you have questions. If you are a student who is planning to utilize payment plans, you are going to go ahead and enroll in the Nelnet Fax payment plan option. So once you're in your e-services and you're viewing your bill, you're going to go ahead and select the term. Since you can register for fall and spring semester um, at Ridgewater, you do full year registration, you're going to want to select the appropriate semester that you're setting up the payment plan for. We do have it set up by semester and not for the full year. Once you select the fall semester, you'll then be able to determine, do you have some financial aid that you're using so you have a smaller balance? Do you want to add in the cost of your books and materials so you have a higher balance? Um, typically, students do not factor in the cost of their books and materials, but if that is something that you would like to help review, uh, please let me know and I can help you look at that cost. Once you've plugged in the numbers into the appropriate box, you're going to follow the link to the Nelnet website. You'll need to create an account with them, and then they're going to give you your options that you're eligible for. Now, depending on when you set up your payment plan, you'll see that you'll have typically two or three options. At this point, you should see two options available to you. You'll see an option to pay 15% uh, of your bill, or you'll see an option to pay 30% uh, of your bill, and then have either three installments or two installments. Now, if you set up a payment plan and then you decide that you're not going to take this many courses, um, you will be refunded for some of that, but not for the enrollment fee. That is something that is non-refundable. So that's a $24 charge. Again, if you have questions on payment plans, we can connect you with our business office staff. Uh, your advisor may have some information, but we do work with the third party company uh, through Nelnet. So just reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns. We want to get some type of payment on file before the first Friday of classes to ensure that you do not get dropped. So that's your payment plan option, your down payment, um, third party payment if you are having an employer or agency help pay, you, uh, pay for your school, your FAFSA or Minnesota DREAM Act. If you're not sure if you have anything on file or you're not sure you meet one of those requirements, please call us so that we can help you look at your file and determine what your next steps will be. So I mentioned third party payment. If you are someone who has a business or organization helping you pay for school, there may be additional paperwork that you need to complete. If you haven't done so yet, you can contact our third party payment coordinator, Karen. Karen is located in the business office. So I've listed her contact information for you. Um, so email karen.stulen at ridgewater.edu and her phone number 320-222-5640. At Ridgewater College, we're very grateful and thankful for our students who are veterans. And so we do have a representative um, from the VA who works with our students. Carrie Johnson has uh, various availability. Her information can also be found on our website. But if you are a veteran, then you can contact Carrie by email or by cell phone. If you're not sure of who to start with, maybe you meet more than one area, start by calling us at the Student Services Department. Let us know your situation, and then we'll try and connect you with the appropriate department. Um, at this point, I just want to remind you that you can charge against financial aid on the bookstore um, website, so ridgewaterbookstore.com. 
If you're planning to order online through the Ridgewater Bookstore website, you do want to have a bank or credit card available, even if you're not going to be uh, using your own method of payment, you want to have that on file. Now we will have a workshop on how to order your books and process the Ridgewater Bookstore website. So if you have not signed up for that, please review the registration information or message Kim or myself and we can get that to you. Um, but I want to make sure that you're aware that if you're using financial aid, you can charge against that and have that charge applied to your bill. So getting ready for your semester, as long as we have that financial aid on file, you can make your appropriate charges, then you can accept your financial aid that you'll be using and set up payment plans if you need to. Um, I do see that I have a small typo on here. Um, Oh, excuse me, I do not. So spring semester is listed as well, um, but the focus is for fall semester. So at this point, we wanna make sure we have at least one payment requirement met for you, and that needs to be completed by Friday, August 27th. So by the first Friday of classes. If you are not sure, or if you do not have one of those uh, payment options in place, you will be dropped from your courses. So please reach out to somebody, whether it's student services or your academic advisor, um, if you have any questions or concerns. You can find information in your e-services on how to set up those options, but you can always reach out to us. Um, we're available by, by phone, by Zoom, and we do have staff on campus as well. The last piece I want to point out is with scholarships. If you have a scholarship outside of the Ridgewater College Foundation, so outside of our scholarship department, then you are going to want to notify our scholarship coordinator, Stephanie Jimenez. So I provided her email for you as well. Um, again, Stephanie is um, on our Willamere campus. Um, she does have some Hutchinson availability as well. If you have questions or concerns uh, related to scholarships and you are not sure what your next steps are, starting with Stephanie will always be your first, uh, first option. And then I just want to repeat our contact information again. Um, again, our student services number is 320-222-5971. The option to pay your tuition is 320-234-8596. And to contact financial aid, 320-222-7488. At this point, um, does anybody have questions or concerns that you feel that the entire group could benefit from? Again, you can message me directly, you can message Kim directly, you can post to the entire group, or you can unmute yourself. So I know when it comes to understanding financial aid and payment options that it can be a very individualized experience. So what I would like to do is stay on the meeting and we will stop recording. And then if anyone has individual questions, um, we can start with myself. And then depending on your question, we may need to connect you with the financial aid office or the business office. For today, our main goal is just to make sure that you're comfortable with navigating your e-services and that you know about how to accept your financial aid and how to set up payment plans if you're planning to do so. Johanna, I will stop the recording now if that's okay. Okay. Or do you think I should leave it for a, a little bit? Um, does anybody have any questions that you can think of at this point? So there is a question in the chat. Can I use financial aid to pay for class tools such as Cengage and Cengage subscriptions? Yes, so when you're ordering your textbooks um, and your materials, if, you're, if you have a class that has um, Cengage or an ebook listed, you will be able to select that option. In terms of tools, if you're in a technical program, we'll want to check with the program that you're a part of, as that can vary by program on um, if and how you can make those payments. Um, typically, if your program has a tool day, you will have been notified about that when you had orientation or met with your advisor. So um, for example, our auto body auto mechanics, if you are not sure if you have a tool day, 
I would say reach out to your technical program advisor and then depending on what they have for you, you'll be able to potentially charge against financial aid. Okay. Excuse me. So at this point, we will stop recording and then 